La liberté a rencontré Brian Godkin, le directeur général de Future Hope, un organisme qui aide à la réinsertion d'anciens détenus. Avant tout ça, il a lui-même connu la prison pendant plusieurs années. Voici son histoire. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a lack of knowledge uh, of people and, and around prisons. Around, it's, it's something like it's kind of taboo too that we don't really want to talk about. Um, because the prisoners coming out don't want to talk about it. They want to get away from the system, or most of them do. Uh, you know, uh, like me, do I enjoy doing this? No, <laughs> I don't. But I do realize that there is a need for people to know. There's a need for people to, to try to understand what our system and especially how our society is affecting everybody. And, and you know what, these people that are going to prison um, are our brothers and sisters. They are our mother and father. They are our aunts and uncles, right? They are our children, right? Like it's not just about the individual going to prison that's being punished. It is, it is a collective. Through my journey um, of coming uh, before going to prison, just shortly before going to prison, and then also going through the prison system, um, the divine intervention part was about the I felt called by God, right? And it started when I was uh, 17, I felt called. I was at a church service with a buddy. My family never went to church, right? So I wasn't exposed to any of that. Uh, in fact, as I went through life, I argued against God um, and the church and everything else, that the atrocities that were occurred. Then when I hit my mid-30s, uh, um, uh, then I felt this little calling. And so while this was going on, I was involved in criminal activity, right? But I felt this calling and it's, it's uh, so that, but it was really, it got weaker as I went. When my crime became known uh, to, to the peoples, and uh, well, just before it became known, I'd prayed to God and said, you know what, I can't come to you because of the crime I'm in, because of the promises I'd already made to everybody else. I couldn't come to, 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 to have that relationship. Um, so it was just two weeks after that, uh, my crime had become known and I was arrested and, and uh, sent to prison, um, to remand center for nine months. So that's kind of how how I kind of came to prison. It was not really the backstory as far as why I went to prison, but that is the most important part, right, uh, of this whole thing, because it's, the journey is about healing. We're, we're all on individual journeys. Yeah, you do actually, you know, you do feel human because the, the despite the restrictions, uh, despite all the fear going in, because it is an unknown, just, you're, you take uh, basically the, the large, peoples um, of societies, right, the larger society, and you just make a little cosmos society. So when you're in there, right, um, I found you, there were still bullies. Uh, there were still people trying to muscle people. There was a black market, right? There was people trying to commit suicide. There was people, you know, excessive, you know, in some ways, uh, drug use. There was fights. Yeah, prison's not a nice, not a really a nice place, but it was a place also, the human side of it was, doesn't matter where humanity goes, we're still humans. Right, at the end of it, we're still humans. Future Hope offers you a place. If you want to participate, if you realize you need help and want help, so you have this group of peer support, of a commonality of everybody who's been in prison. And you get to see as you come out how hard it is for some of the guys to make the transition. You get to see how hard it is that, you know, if they're trying to find jobs, they can't find a job because it's asked. Well, do you have a criminal record? Yes. Okay, well, thank you for coming in, right? right? They can't tell you that they're not going to hire you because of that, um, right? Uh, and then, so you, you have this peer support around you. You have people that care, right? You can, you can, if you're having a bad day, you bring it to the group, and the group says, okay, well, you're having a bad day. Well, you know what? Talk about it. Let's go through this, and let's see what is there. People that I meet, if they don't know I've ever been in prison, don't know, yeah. right? And they just, they just accept me for who I am today. They accept me at face value. They chit chat to me, they talk to me, right? Have a good conversation uh, and then they go on their way, right? It's not until that they maybe something comes up and they find out you're in prison, they go, really, right? But if they know me already, then they go, oh, well, that's okay. I don't, I don't wanna know what you did, don't care. I like you, carry on, right? But if you meet somebody first time and they, they know you're from prison, then pretty soon the walls come up, right? 
until they get to know you. And that's interesting because I found that for myself too. Before going to prison, I never thought I would go to prison, right? But yet I remember having this attitude towards people that were in prison, right? So I'm, the hypocrisy is within myself also. Uh, and that's, you know what, that was a real eye opener to me. Learn about your emotions, right? Learn about where they come from, right? Well, where they come from is they're deep within us. They automatically come up. It's not like we can control emotions, but once we have the emotion, we can look at it and do something about it. We don't have to act on it, right? We don't have to act on it. And, and that, that's really the biggest message I want to take away is, is work on yourselves. There, there's a hole within our hearts that needs to be filled. And you know what, we have, to, we have to work on that. It can't be filled by anybody else, but we have to work on that to have that connection and to learn about our emotions.